Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Sharon Moore, Michigan, working their way through fall camp. And we are four practices in and getting a lot of intel around how this Michigan program is shaking out heading into 2024. And we always said this would be a fascinating next couple of weeks for this Michigan team where not only a new coaching staff, but a ton of new players that are going to have an opportunity to kind of put a stamp on what they're going to mean to this Michigan program in 2024 want to get into some of those names that are standing out, most notably at the quarterback position. Now, before we get into this, I want to just ask the Michigan fans to let it fly in the comment section, right? Many of you guys know I'm a massive Michigan fan. We have talked extensively about this quarterback battle. It's a contested topic. I mean, there are a lot of different Michigan fans that have different opinions and feels for who they want to be quarterback one. Would love to hear how you guys are feeling in the comments section. Of course, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. The Michigan community that we're building is absolutely amazing. Y'all know I love talking this program. I can't thank you guys enough for rocking with the fellas. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. A lot to talk about over the next couple of weeks. And without further ado, let's get into this one. And let's start at the quarterback spot where Alex Orgy seems to be the quarterback that's standing out during the first couple of practices. This is the word that stuck out to me when you're hearing the buzz around Alex Orgy and it's consistency. This was the biggest thing that was going to prevent Alex Orgy from being quarterback one for this Michigan program, specifically as a passer, right? You go back to Alex Orgy coming out of high school. We all know this kid has a hose. I mean, you see in some of these offseason workouts, one obviously big body, phenomenal athlete running the football. We know he has a cannon of an arm, very similar to how we talked about Joe Milton a couple of years ago. That being said, Joe Milton never found that consistency. To hear that Alex Orgy has been the most consistent passer in the fall camp, that's the biggest storyline. And if you get Alex Orgy to be a consistent thrower of the football in 2024, That's going to make this Michigan offense so difficult to deal with because we have a good feeling that this offensive line is going to be very good. You have a ton of talented running backs in this room. This rushing attack with Alex Orgy at quarterback is going to be extremely dynamic, but only if Alex Orgy shows that ability to push the football down the field. Because a lot of you guys made some really good points in the comments section over the last couple of weeks. Yes, we know Alex Orgy brings a tremendous asset to this Michigan ground game. But if we're seeing seven, eight man boxes consistently because we can't throw the football, we're not going to beat teams like Texas, Oregon, Ohio state. It's really hard to beat these top end teams being a one dimensional offense. So to hear Alex orgy putting it together as a passer at the quarterback position, that's by far the biggest storyline. I think a lot of Michigan fans would agree with this. Our ceiling as an offense is the highest with Alex Orgy at quarterback, assuming that he puts it together as a thrower of the football in 2024. And to hear that he is a consistent passer during the first first, first couple fall camp practices, that's probably the biggest storyline. And I think he has some of those intangibles checked off. I mean, you kind of get a feel within this Michigan program, how the players speak of Alex Orgy. He's kind of one of the leaders in the locker room, which is something you certainly look for at the quarterback position. I think a lot of the signs are pointing towards Alex Orgy, but to hear that he's a consistent thrower of the football, that's by far the biggest takeaway we have from this quarterback battle. I don't think it's anywhere close to being over. You know Kirk Campbell and Sharon Moore want to get this process right. You want to make sure you have the right quarterback going into 2024 because you don't want to start flip-flopping and changing guys. So take your time, make the right decision, and it's kind of a balance where You want to take your time, make sure you get the right guy, but you also want to find your quarterback one as soon as possible so he can kind of take command of that offense. We'll see if we get any word from Sharon Moore about this quarterback battle over the next couple of days. Now, some other storylines that are emerging for me on the offensive side of the football is that the offensive line position where you do have some position battles, and I think you have some locks here, right? Miles sitting at left tackle, I, I continue to buy stock in Miles Sin, not only being a quality left tackle for Michigan, I think he can be one of the better left tackles that we see in the country in 2024. Sharon Moore even said as much that he probably should have been playing more in the 2023 season. So to hear Miles Sin continuing to get that, to kind of reach that ceiling is what I would say is a really big storyline. You look at the inside of the offensive line, you're still battling with Greg Crippen, Raheem Anderson, 
at the center position. I think a lot of Michigan fans just feel really good about whoever wins that job. It's going to be a really good football player. Josh Preeb, Giovanni Ohadi, kind of anchoring the two guard spots. I think that's inside of the offensive line is going to be really good. Now, the one question we have about this offensive line is that right tackle spot where Andrew Gentry and Jeff Percy are seemingly the two tackles that are battling it out. The biggest storyline is Evan Link, the redshirt freshman, seems to be getting himself into that battle for that starting right tackle spot. Now, I still lean Andrew Gentry because, quite frankly, I think, one, he has the highest ceiling, but more importantly, he fits what Sharon Moore wants to do on the offensive line, and that's move bodies off the line of scrimmage. I think Andrew Gentry is the most physically imposing offensive lineman we have at that right tackle spot. That being said, Evan Link, we love this kid. Coming out in the 2023 cycle, he was long. He was a phenomenal athlete, needed to add some weight to the frame. He's up to 310 pounds. He's a 6'7 long arm tackle. That's a very good athlete. Evan Link is going to start for this Michigan program. If I were to guess, it'd be in the 2025 season at left tackle. Once Miles Hinton goes to the NFL, really good to hear that Evan Link is starting to put it together at that tackle spot. The last player got to talk about Marlon Klein at the tight end spot. Look, we know we have one of the best tight ends, not one of the best tight end in the country, and junior or Colson Loveland, excuse me. Marlon Klein emerging as that tight end too. He was included on Bruce Feldman's freak list. Marlon Klein has so much upside to his game. We know we want to run the passing attack through this tight end position, and that tight end two spot's important. Michigan runs a lot of two tight end sets, and to have that second tight end emerge as a legitimate difference maker within this Michigan offense – it's a massive storyline. Again, a lot of the attention is going to go to Colson Loveland, but if you can have that second tight end who can be a freak show like Marlon Klein can kind of emerge as that guy, that's a massive storyline for this Michigan offense. Now, going to the defensive side of the football, a couple of players that I want to highlight. One, Jay Sean Barham. You continue to hear that he is emerging as a dude within this Michigan defense. And I'm going to start with a, a little bit of a hot take here. And that is this Michigan linebacker room is going to be better than it was last year. And I understand that's a hot take. Junior Colson, Mikey Bear, both playing at the NFL. Well, guess what? I think Jay Sean Barm and Ernest Hausman are on their way to go in the NFL as well. I think these two linebackers have so much upside from an athletic standpoint. And to hear that they are kind of solidifying themselves as that linebacker duo. I think that's a massive storyline for Michigan and specifically for Jay Sean Barham's circumstance. This kid can be such an X factor in this Wink Martindale defense where Wink Martindale wants to send his linebackers on blitzes plenty. Jay Sean Barham is one of the best blitzing linebackers that we see in the country, kind of like how good Mikey Barrett was last year at blitzing. Jay Sean Barham is probably a little bit better. And so if you can get Jay Sean Barham solidifying himself in that linebacker rotation, getting comfortable in the defense, and then letting Wink Martindale kind of take the leash off Jay Sean Barham a little bit, get creative in terms of where he's aligned and what he's doing within this defense. I think Jay Sean Barham not only can be first team all Big Ten caliber linebacker, but a perfect fit within this Wink Martindale defense. I think the next storyline we have to talk about is Jair Hill seemingly solidifying himself as that cornerback too. I think Michigan's in a really good spot here. You look at Will Johnson on one side. One, when you have a cornerback like Will Johnson, it gets so much easier to shake out the secondary where, hey, we're just going to leave Will Johnson on one side, leave him alone, put him on an island, and just not worry about it because that's how good Will Johnson is. When you have that true cornerback one, there's not that many in college football. Will Johnson's one of them. It's a massive asset to this Michigan defense. Now, again, the question was, who is going to win that cornerback two job I think it's between two guys in Jair Hill and Amir Hall. I'm a massive fan of Amir Hall. The more and more I go watch him back at Albany, the more and more I think he can play for Michigan in 2024. That being said, Jair Hill probably is a guy that has higher upside. Man, if he can put it together and beat out a guy like Amir Hall, who I think is a really good football player, you're going to get really good cornerback to play for this Michigan defense. And I think the last storyline you have is at that nickel spot where Jaden McBurrows and Zeke Barry are battling it out. I think Jaden McBurrows is the guy that gives this position a high floor. Uh, we're all pretty confident that Jaden McBurrows can be a very solid nickel cornerback for Michigan. That being said, it kind of similar to the conversation at the quarterback spot. Zeke Barry probably gives us a little bit higher of a ceiling. 
you look at Zeke Barry one, I think another really good fit within this Wink Martindale defense, a premier athlete with very good size that can get involved in the tackle box, whether it's run support, whether it's blitz in the quarterback, all those things that Mikey Sandstro was so good at. I think Zeke Barry can really excel at that position as well. So to get that kind of battle and I mean, for Michigan fans, this is exactly how you want it to look, right? We know we got a good nickel in Jaden McBurrows, but if Zeke Barry can beat Jaden McBurrows out, what does that mean for Zeke Barry? He's a damn good football player heading into 2024. To hear Zeke Barry putting it together, I think one of the more talented players on this Michigan defense, that's another massive storyline within this Michigan program. A lot of other position battles that are going to take in place. I am interested to see how the Quentin Johnston and Jaden Mangum battle goes out. I think Jaden Mangum is going to be our starting safety. I think he's a guy that can really turn the football over, go find the football. I think he kind of blends and balances out what Makari Page does really well as well. We'll see how it goes. Again, we still got to put the pads on for this Michigan program. It's going to get a little bit more real over the next couple of weeks. But Zeke Berry, Jair Hill, Alex Orji, Jay Sean Barham, to hear some of those guys starting to stand out and create some buzz for this Michigan defense, some massive storylines. We'll continue to keep you guys updated. Again, would love to hear some of your biggest storylines for this Michigan program. I know a lot of Michigan fans are reading the fall camp practice notes as well. Would love to hear from y'all. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.